This is Victory House. Uh, let's open our Bibles or uh, tap our Bibles <laughs> to Jeremiah chapter number 29. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Jeremiah 29 or Jerry, Prophet Jerry. You know, if, it were, if they were writing him in 2018, they would have said Jerry. Jeremiah 29 and 11. The Bible says, for I know the plans I have for you. Can somebody be there? She said, God has a plan for me. Say, I am not an accident. <laughs> Say, I am not an accident. <laughs> See, because sometimes the devil likes to tell you that, that you are an accident. That uh, your life does not look like it's going in a particular direction. It's a lie of the, of the enemy. I am not an accident. Can you say it one more time? I am not an accident. God said, for I know the thoughts that I, I think toward you. Seeth the Lord. God is thinking about me. Ah, some people think, oh, everybody has forgotten me. Not everybody. There is somebody that the Bible said he is thinking about you. In fact, Psalm 8 says that the mind of God is full of me. God does not have anything he's thinking about. He does not have any other business. When God said he's walking, what is he walking? He's walking, busy thinking about me. He's concerned, he's connected, he has not abandoned me. God is still thinking of me. I, his mind is full of me. And he said, look. When I'm thinking of you, I'm thinking of a plan for you. So I have a plan for you. Says God has a plan for me. So for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, see the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Can somebody say peace? peace? The word peace there means nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. So I want you to have wholeness. I want to make sure that you enjoy wholeness. Can somebody shout peace one more time? Peace. So he said, I am thinking the thoughts of peace towards you and not of evil. I declare every evil agenda that is still in 2018 waiting for you. They will miss you. <laughs> I thought somebody would say a bigger amen. Every evil agenda, they will miss you. He said, look, I am thinking about you. I have a plan for you. And I want you to understand the characteristic of our plan. That plan, one, is a peaceful plan. It's a plan that makes sure that you don't get something to lose another thing. It's a plan that makes sure that you don't get a car and lose your home. You don't get a home and lose your marriage. It's a plan to make sure that you are adding to it. You are multiplying. No subtraction. I speak to everyone at the sound of my voice. You are entering in the stage of your multiplication yeah. you might have enjoyed addition from January to November but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God enter into your multiplication yeah. multiplication is different from addition addition moves in small small progression but multiplication can accelerate because if you say uh, 2 plus 10 you will have 12 but you say the same 2 multiplied by 10 you will have 20 I'm telling somebody listening to me this morning you have come into the season of your multiplication so God said, I know the thoughts I have towards you. It's a thought of peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Say, my end is the end that God has in mind. So God wants to give you an expected end. In some translation, it's a glorious future, a colorful future, a beautiful picture. There's a song we used to sing. I don't know if you've heard it before. It's a colorful, very bright. I will get there. My future is bright. I remember in high school, maybe high school or college, some people used to say, my future is so bright, I need sunshade. I want to tell you, you have a bright future. Can somebody say, I have a bright future? And the, the, the devil may be telling you it's too late. This is 2018. Have you forgotten the calendar? Did you look at your clock? Uh, do you know how you are feeling in your body? Do you know what your bank account is saying? But all of them, they are telling lies. Because God said, I have the plans. I have plans. And my plans supersede every other plan. Because there are other plans. But the plan of God, that shall stand. There are many counsels in the, in the heart of a man. But the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So I don't, I don't know the plan of the government. I don't know the plan of your neighbor. I don't even know the plan of your landlord but I know the plan of God it is a good plan it's a peaceful plan it's a plan that does not include evil it, and that plan is moving you toward an expected end can somebody shout an expected end 
Then Proverbs 23 and 18. Proverbs 23, 18. The Bible says, For surely there is a future, or a future hope for you, and your hope, or some other translation goes, your expectation will not be cut short. I'm declaring over somebody, your expectation will not be cut short. Amen. So moving away from Proverbs, let's go to Romans 4, 18 to 20. Romans chapter 4, verse 18, 18 to 20. Today we are going to dance. Look at your neighbor and say, we are going to dance. And why we dance is we show God that we know some things have happened. We know that God has been good, and we want to show him goodness. We do that first Sunday of the month. We usually dance to our good God. Romans 4, 18 to 20. The Bible says, who contrary against hope, believed in hope. Who contrary to normal circumstances. Let me tell you the truth. Everybody that you see celebrating in God, many of them also had it rough. Some people think, well, if I had it better, I would celebrate God better. No, 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 no. Sometimes it is rough. The journey, sometimes when you read the Bible, you are reading a finished story. Just like when you go on Instagram, some of the pictures you are seeing, they are already finished picture. They are filtered picture. They don't have all the pains, all the scars there. They have edited all of that out. So they show you the finished product. And you don't know that there has been a process that has gotten them there. So the Bible is telling us how Abraham got where he got to. The Bible said it was against hope. He believed against the odds. The odds were against him. There were things that were staring him in his eye. Calendar was not in his favor. Uh, uh, Many, many things were not in favor. Just like some people listening to me today. If you count the many things that are against you, if you count the many things that have gone wrong, you may be tempted to believe the lie of the devil. But God is still saying the same thing he has been saying since the beginning of the year. I have a plan for you. It is a good plan. It is a peaceful plan. And that plan will get you to an expected end. So who against the odds, who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which has been spoken. Notice that. According to that which has been spoken, or according to how it started, according as it happened in January, who against what was happening in November, still believed that what God said in January, God was not making, it, was not making empty promises. God is still able to make it happen, even in the December of life. So I'm telling somebody listening to me. It's not too late. Uh, the time has not gone. 2018 has not gone. You can still become uh, and you can still do what God has for you in the name of Jesus. So he said, who contrary to hope believed so that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall your seed be. And be not weak in faith. <laughs> he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither the, yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at, at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Yeah. I personally believe man has been making movements somehow in his life since he started. When we, we, we read the story of man, when God created man in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 2, and man, everything was perfect. Uh, uh, even at that time, man, God expected man to move. God expected man to advance. God expected man to increase the Garden of Eden and take the Garden of Eden all over the earth. The other day, my kids were asking me that the God create cars. I said, God did not create cars because they had been taught that God created everything. So they were wondering if God created cars. I said, God did not create cars. But but God created the things that created cars. So what man did was that man took whatever God created at the raw material level and kept moving and kept moving till he created all kinds of things that he has created now. And they have not created everything yet. Amen to that? Amen. There are still people listening to me today. You will invent things. I, I thought you can say it better. I said you will invent things. Amen. Uh, because some people have believed the lie of the devil. Oh, some people have done everything. It's not true. I remember when I was leaving college, I, I thought that everything that could be done in the computer world had been done then. I just started thinking to myself that, that but somewhere in my spirit, I would just hear, no, it's not, everything has not been done yet. And this time, they had not done Facebook. There was no Twitter. There were no apps. There was no iPhone. Can you imagine the world without smartphones? Huh? 
I mean, the world without smartphone is like a world that you don't, you, your kids, if they, if, if they don't even know phones that have keypad. I remember when iPhone 4 came out, I, I, I was telling myself, I said, there goes Apple again. This is the most stupid. You will not put keypad on the phone. How are you going to do it? And the BlackBerry people were feeling like iPhone is stupid. You know, BlackBerry people, they were very proud that those days. They carried this very ugly phone and they are happy about it because the thing will be doing when you are scrolling the one dial thing like that. You know, they were very happy. You know, they had BlackBerry. I can get my mails. The mails can just drop. <laughs> And they, 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 they thought where they were. Even Blackberry thought they were on top of the world. And they thought everything had been done. Some people, I think some people suggested to them, Blackberry, Nokia, they suggested to these guys, go in the direction of touch phone. Said, what do we need to do with that? I don't even, is Nokia still alive? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, maybe those people that just like big phones that look like walkie-talkie, uh, Nokia communicator, those very bulky phones. Is that, that's not even a phone. It's a computer that, does, you know, that you cannot have. But inventions have happened after since then. And I still want to tell you, the best has not been done yet. Uh, even in 2018, the best has not been done yet. The best is still yet to come. And through you, God will make the best happen. Amen. So man has been moving, he has been innovating, he has been advancing. And, uh, you know, he has kind of been on the run. In fact, his run now went in a particular direction that I just want to uh, mention uh, this morning. That sometimes... Life can take you in that direction. Because you see, man, God wants us to move, but not every movement, not every direction is the direction that God wants us to move. God wants us to move in the direction of the expected end. He wants us to move in the direction of the expected end. But when we got to Genesis chapter 3, the Bible said man started to run, but man was not running to God. Man was running from God. The expected then that God has for us is not to run from him, whichever problem or whatever happens, is to run to him. I'm, ask, I'm, I'm praying for you that every season of your life, you will always run to God, not run from him. Amen. I thought you would say a bigger amen. amen. Some people, when they were single, they ran to God. When they got married, they started running from God. And running from God may just mean that you are not running to God. Because if you are not running to God, you are kind of running away from him. If you are not advancing towards him, if you are not doing those things that you used to do, we used to see you in church, we used to, you, 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 were, you were making all the meetings those days, and now, but, but, but pastor, you need to understand, some people, it will be a job, but pastor, it's my job, but pastor, you understand. So the problem now is that God has helped you. The problem now is that God has answered the prayer. The, the, the miracle God now gave you has been the problem. You know, that's what the first man did. The first man in Genesis 3, the Bible said, something happened and he started running from God. And God said, Adam, where are you? <laughs> in Genesis 3, 10, 10, Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice and I was afraid. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Man ran away from God because of what he had been doing. But man didn't really need to run away from God. He needed to run to God. Sin sometimes wants us to run away from God. Even situations sometimes want us to run away from God. Circumstances sometimes, whether good or bad, wants us to run away from God. Sometimes when people are going through stuff, that's when they run away from God. But I want to tell you, irrespective of what is happening, the best place to run to is God. The best person to run to is God. I like a young man that got it together later on in life. Luke chapter 15 and verse 17 to 20. Luke 15, 17 to 20 talks about the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son. Somehow, this guy had spent all the money that his father willed to him in riotous living. And the Bible now said that uh, uh, something happened uh, to him. And the Bible said he came to himself. I'm praying for somebody listening to me, whether I'm here or sometime later, that you will come to yourself uh, in this season in the name of Jesus. And what does the Bible mean by him coming to himself? He came to the realization that God is not to be run. You, should, you are not supposed to run away from God. You are always supposed to run to God. 
every time you find yourself in any fix, whether it is fixed that you cost yourself or it was cost on you or it's something you had control over or you didn't have control over, the best person to run to is God. Uh, I like parents that tell their children that I, I don't want you to get in trouble, but if you ever get in trouble, don't forget that you can come home. Uh, you can run back home. I will still love you with tough love. Amen. I will correct you, but you will still be my child. And the Bible said in Luke 15, 17 to 20, Luke 15, 20, 17 to 20, it says that the young man came to himself. There are many young people that need to come to themselves, that this lifestyle is not worth it, that this way I'm just living like the devil himself is not worth it. I, they need to come to themselves, that just showing up in church does not mean I am part of the church. Because some people, since January till now, they have been playing church. They've just shown up. We will sing together. We will do everything together. You are just playing church. You need to come to yourself. This is December. This year is going to finish. Are you going to end this year the way you ended last year again? Are you going to continue those things? Some people keep saying, well, I'm just a weak vessel. How long will you have to be weak? Why can't you come to yourself and run to your father and say, Father, help me. Can somebody shout loud and clear? Say, Father, help me. Bible said this guy came to himself. Many of us need to come to ourselves. Sometimes doing the same thing and expecting a different result, somebody said it's insanity. You can't keep doing what you have been doing. You have been doing the same thing and been getting the same bad result. You probably need to come to yourself. You probably need to stop. You probably need to think. You pro Many people, when they get to January 1, that's when they start to think. That's when they start to reflect. It is too late by that time. If you want to have a good 2019, this is the best time. Because I, I, I like how the Bible puts it. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible will say, God created uh, um, light, uh, he created this, he created that. Then he will go and say this. He will now say, the evening and the day, the fourth day. Meaning, in the eyes of God, it seems like a new day starts from the evening. It seems like a new day starts from the evening. Or a new year starts off from a preceding year. If you are going to have a good 2019, this is when you need to come to yourself. This is when you need to start taking inventory. This is when you need to start asking, what is not working? Which friendship is not working? The way I'm spending my money like this, <laughs> it is not good. I was telling man of God the other day, I said, I'm changing my approach to spending money next year. I'm changing how we are going to spend the money. I'm going to give it to a good manager. Amen to that. <laughs> Can somebody say amen to that? <laughs> I said before, this is how we spend money in our house. The money comes in, and Pastor E says, do this, do this, do this. I said, you know what we are going to do? The money will come in. We will now pass it through my wife, who is a good manager. Amen? Amen. And I know when it passes through, sometimes it may not come out. It will just stay there. <laughs> oh, so I said, I think we need to do that plan. I think that plan will work. I told her, she said, ah, but I said, I know what I'm doing. The, we will find the money. In December, we will still see the money. But if you pass through Pastor E, it's just going to be passing through. <laughs> you know? So some of you may need to ask yourself, how am I doing on finances? Do you know that it is not how much you make? It's how much you keep. And sometimes, making more money is by keeping more money. Do you, is that not why they lay off people at work? Because some people, suddenly they come to themselves that, I think we are spending more than we are making. Then they cut some things. Then they did. And you need to do that to yourself too. Some of you need to, the cable you are not going to be at home to watch, just cut it. Get scissors. And the other car you don't need, cut it. Some people are always buying car every year, every so often. You know? One day, one, I think it was two years ago, I just discovered that it seems like every two years we'll buy another car. And the, the value, car is not a, an investment. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. The value keeps dropping. By the time you say, okay, I don't like this guy again. It's, 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 it's. You now say you want to sell it. They will just tell you the price. You'll be like, are you kidding me? The guy I bought for this amount, you know. So some of you need to talk to yourself and begin to say, look, I need to run towards God. I need help. I need to take inventory of my life. Uh, and um, you, you, you start experiencing the fullness of God. Another run that I see in scripture, apart from the run of, um, um, of Adam, was the run of Moses. And there are people like, like Moses that are in this room this morning. The, the, the Bible said about Moses in, uh, in Exodus, chapter 12, 2, Exodus chapter 2 and verse 11. 
Exodus 2 from verse 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out to his brethren and looked at their burdens and spied on Egyptians, smiting an Hebrew. Uh, uh, one of, okay, <laughs> I need to move fast. Okay, one of his brethren, verse 12, and he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid in the sand. Verse 13. Uh, the Bible says, And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to them that, uh, that, that, that did the wrong. Wherefore smilest thou uh, thy fellow? And he said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me? <laughs> this is very strong English. Amen to Jesus. As thou killedest <laughs> the Egyptian. And Moses feared and said, Surely this is known. And verse uh, 15, the Bible says, And when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled. Some other translations say Moses ran. And remember, Moses was supposed to confront Pharaoh. So Moses was running from what he was supposed to confront. There are some of you that you are running away from what you are supposed to confront. You have run away from what you should be running toward. But I declare that in the name of Jesus, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of sound mind. You are going to confront that mountain, and that mountain will be dissolved before you. In the name of Jesus. So there are people that are running away from something that they should be running away from them. There are people that have terrorized you. There are situations that have terrorized you. You should be the master of that thing. Many times, the thing that you are supposed to be in control over, sometimes try to control you. Because it's the ploy of the devil. The devil knows you are supposed to be a, a lord in this particular area. He knows that you are supposed to be in charge in this particular area. And you now have serious challenge. Have you not noticed? There are, there are some of the people that are supposed to be world-leading inventors, world-leading leading scientists. One of their challenges when they are growing up is that there will be a funny teacher that the devil will just plant in their growing up age that will say they are not smart. Say so you are a dog kid. People like Einstein. Many, many of the guys that invented stuff, they told them you cannot do something. Even one of our pastors here, they, they, they told him that you don't know how to, you don't know English. The other day I saw a tribute was right here. I said, that teacher is a liar. Amen. <laughs> I said, look at all of this. That teacher is a liar. And the devil tries to put that in our way. Things that you should be running away from you, you are running from them. But I declare that in the name of Jesus, everything that should be running away from you, that you are running from, I declare a change of status in Jesus' name. Amen. Because there are many things. There are people that are running away from things that God has told them to do. The things that God has placed in their hands. They are seemingly being oppressed by the thing that should be terrorized by them. The, 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 the plan of God was that Pharaoh was supposed to be, uh, was that Moses was supposed to be a God over Pharaoh. In fact, look at Exodus 7 and verse 1. Exodus 7 verse 1. The Bible said to, to, uh, uh, to, to Moses, he said, and the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you a God. God has made you to be in charge. I want you to say loud and clear, say, I am in charge. Because sometimes the devil wants to convince you that no, you are uh, inferior. You are, no! God has made you in charge. Even in this country, whatever status you find yourself, you are still in charge. I don't, don't believe the lie of the devil for one bit. You are in charge. You are a Moses in transition. You are a Moses in making. You are the commander in making. You are the, the one to overrule and you are just in making. Can somebody say amen to that? So the next time you find yourself in difficult position, just say, God is at work. I'm a work in progress. I'm a miracle going somewhere to happen. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to cave. I'm not going to be afraid because God is for me. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. So life is a journey. In, in life, we are moving. In life, we are running. But we need to be moving in the right direction. We need to be running towards what we should be running to. We, need to not, we are not supposed to be running away from some things because God wants those things to be running away from us. And in life, if you just do life by default, your speed will be slow. The default speed in life is manual. It's slow. It's like riding, going on the stairwells. You know, the gym that I normally go to, there is an elevator. The elevator takes a little bit. If you count, it probably would take like 50 seconds before it comes. So sometimes you get to the elevator, you think that it is slow. And some people will just forget about the elevator. They will run for the stairwells. 
But that guy that waited for 50 seconds, by the time the elevator comes, in another 20 seconds, is downstairs. The guy that thought that the elevator was slow is still trying to climb downstairs and trying to walk it out. But I have come to tell somebody, it may look like 2018 has been slow. You are about to enter an elevator. Amen. I thought somebody would say, bigger, amen. amen. God is about to accelerate you. You are picking up speed in the name of Jesus. So if the journey of life is done manually, in the strength of the flesh, in your own human strength, it will be limited. It will be boring. It will be longer. That's why we lean on God. That's why we lean on the help of the Holy Spirit. One of the things that God has been stirring up in my heart is one scripture. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, it's not by power. It's not by might, but by my spirit. If anybody has the spirit of God inside of them, they are like the balloon that you have put hair inside. They can fly. They can gain speed. They can move. And I'm speaking to somebody listening to me this morning. You are going to gain speed. I, I thought you would say a big game and you are going to gain speed. So you need the right motion, the right speed. If you don't have the right speed, you may be applying yourself. You may be working. You may be trying. If there is no help of God on what you are doing, your motion will be limited. Your progress will be limited. But I know the help of God, like unlike before, is coming upon what you are doing in the name of Jesus. So you need the right progress. You need the right speed to move on in life. Now, to get this progress, to get the speed in the realm of the unseen, what helps you with your progress or your acceleration is your expectation. <coughs> what helps you with your speed of progress is your expect expectation. The Bible said in the scripture that we read when we started this uh, discussion, in Proverbs 23 and 18, it says, surely there is an end. There is a destination. And the word of God says, your expectation will help you to get to that end. Will, there is something that has to, your expectation has something to do with that destination. So every destination will be arrived by successfully by the right expectation. And I am telling you that if you have expectation of a desired end, if you have expectation of a better destination. I declare that expectation will not be cut short in the name of Jesus. Now, how do you put your expectation to work? And we're going to do that this morning. How do I put my expectation to work? Expectation is activated when celebration is activated. Expectation from the story of Abraham is activated when celebration is activated. Every time the devil brings issues to you, he is really not concerned about the issue. He's concerned about your progress. Because the more you keep moving, you will get to the destination. He wants to slow you down. He wants to renew your speed. That's why you are sad. That's why you are under pressure. That's why you are feeling, because he knows that if he can put you in that mood, he will slow you down. Because he knows that if your expectation is still on that thing, there is no way he will be able to stop you. Because you look at what we read in Romans chapter 4 and 18. The Bible says, uh, Abraham hoped against hope. Abraham believed against the order. Because Abraham was able to be strong in faith. And what helped him was celebration. He was able to celebrate because hope is expectation. How will you be able to expect? How will your expectation be kept intact? When, when, when things are all against you. When you know medical science. When you know what the reports are saying. When you know the diagnosis. When you know how you feel, for example. Sometimes when pastor is preaching, you're like, I know what I'm feeling. I'm feeling the pain. How can I celebrate? How can I raise my expectation and be celebrating God? Will I be celebrating the pain? No, you are just choosing to ignore the pain, celebrate God, so that the, the pain will catch up with your celebration. I speak concerning anybody listening to me. Everything in your life will catch up with your celebration. In the name of Jesus. So praising God increases our pace in the race. Praising God increases our pace in the race. Prayer does increase our pace. But it seems like the way praising God, it takes us to another gear. You know, in the days of stick shift. I don't know how many people know about stick shift nowadays. You know, we, I, I learned how to drive cars using stick shift. You know, where you do clutch. 
Huh? You just are there people here who know how to release the clutch and then balance it? Huh? All right, okay. You know, so uh, in, in the days of stick shift, the, the, the gear system, it's manual. You have to switch the gear yourself. Now nowadays, when you put your car in that D, it just keeps driving you. You don't know when it gets to four or five. But if you want to move higher, if you want to increase your pace, you need to take the gear higher. And the more the speed, uh, the more you can, the, 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 the higher the gear, the more. And what are I'm telling you this morning that celebration takes you to the highest gear. That's the highest gear. So that your pace is not impaired. So that your pace is not impeded. Because life needs some level of speed. If you don't have speed, you will look like you are not moving. But you are moving. But you are just moving manually. So this morning, by the help of God, we will celebrate God. And our pace in the race of 2018 will be increased. I thought I would get an amen to that. So the Bible said concerning Abraham in Romans chapter 4 and 18. He said he believed against hope. He believed the unbelievable. He believed when it didn't make sense. He believed beyond the five senses. Because sometimes some people want to believe only the things that they can, that, that looks possible. They want to be able to go outside and see that the cloud is forming and they say, okay, it's going to rain today. And they want to be able to go outside and see that it looks like it's about to snow. They are saying, oh, they say it's going to snow today. But God is saying that, look, in life, many of the time, you need to be able to look at that expectation and there may be nothing in the natural. There may be nothing in the physical that will be able to corroborate what you want to believe. What you are looking at. But you are going to say no. Even though it does not look like it. I'm still going to believe God. Even though it does not look like it. God is not a man. Even though it does not look like it. God can do what he has promised. Because you see sometimes a, a, a life may, 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 may look very bleak. Life may look like everything everybody has told you about it is not true. <laughs> it may look like oh, they didn't tell me I was going to go through this. They didn't tell me the experience was going to be like this. I, I got to work. I, I, I gave my best. I thought that they said if you work harder, it will come out like this. I thought that they said sewing will lead to ribbon. Why is my sewing not leading to ribbon? I thought that they said if I put one there, a, a ten will come out. But sometimes life does not do you like that. Life does not give you what you have sown. Life looks like what you have demanded demanded of it it is not given to you what you or what you deserve from it it is not given to you but i'm coming to tell you today that it doesn't matter what light i'm giving to you up till today when we activate the gear of praise when we activate the gear of celebrating god it changes the dynamic it changes the equation and i'm declaring that the equation is changing this year i say i'm declaring that the equation is changing this year in the name of jesus there are so many stories in the Bible where we saw that people needed a game change. The way things were going, if it continued like that, those guys were finished. There was a guy named Jehoshaphat. The Bible said the way things were going, he was going to lose the war. He went to meet God. He said, God, what am I going to do? In 2 Chronicles 20, he went to meet God like, God, how am I going to get out of this predicament? How am I going to succeed? How am I going to make it to the end of December? How am I going to have a good 2018? And God said, you know what you are going to do? You need the gear. You need a gear that is the best military strategy. You need a gear that is the best career advisor. You need a gear, and that gear is the gear of praise. You are not going to fight conventionally. You are are going to fight with the weapon of praise. Some people think praising God is a weak thing. Praising God is a weapon of warfare. It's a weapon of mass destruction. Because when you raise the dust from here, when you raise something up from here, my kids were asking me this morning. They came outside. They didn't see the snow. They said, where did the snow go to? I said, it has turned to water and it has gone down. But before we came inside the house, I told my wife, she said, the snow has gone. I said, but you know what that means? It means it's going somewhere and it's coming back down there. Amen. Because when the, the water leaves the floor, it goes up there and it is coming down. When we raise the dust of the water from the earth, it will go to the heavens and it is going to pour. I declare over somebody listening to me this morning, there shall be abundance of rain. There shall be showers of blessing in the name of Jesus. So when we dance, you don't know what we are doing. We are precipitating, precipitating our heavens. 
what we does. We are raising the water up, <laughs> so to say. Uh, you know, in, in some spiritual sense, when you are dancing, when you are losing yourself, you are telling the shackles to get off you. You are telling the thing. Because the Bible said concerning Joseph in that first second Chronicles 20, is the Bible said he to, God told him to put the praisers, the musician, to go ahead of the people. And what were they doing? They were sending something to the heavens. They wanted something to rain on them. They wanted to walk under open heavens. They wanted the heavens over them to be open. And what they did was that they sent something from the earth to the heaven over them so that the heavens over them will open and will power something. So I don't know where you are in the journey of 2018. I don't know where you have gotten into this expected the hand that God has for you. But I can tell you something that can increase your pace. I can tell you something that can increase increase your speed and that very thing is praising God because praising God is a proof that you expect to get to the desired end the Bible said concerning Abraham that it was, he was strong in faith and the evidence God showed us that he was strong in faith was that he was praising God for what God had not done there are people listening to me this morning. They would have, they would tell me if I was to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. They would say, Pastor E, I will dance if God had given me that job. Pastor E, I will dance if I have that baby in my hand. Pastor E, I, 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 it's not that I don't appreciate God. I will appreciate God when I see it. But God is saying, As appreciate me so that you will see it. When you appreciate me, you will see it. You don't need to wait to see it. If you appreciate me as if you have seen it, I will make sure you see it. If you see it, in your heart, if you see it in the mind of your spirit that this is happening, I will now make sure that you will see it in real life. It's like a dress rehearsal. Appreciating God is a dress rehearsal for the real thing. When you appreciate God for the job you don't have, the job will come into your life. When you appreciate God for the child, the spouse, the money that you don't have, you are telling God, I believe you. I trust in you. You are doing like that prodigal son. Come into yourself and running towards where you should run toward, not where you should run from. And God says, when you do that, you are showing me that you want me to put speed in your journey. You want me to accelerate you so that you will move towards that expected end. You will get to that expected end in the name of Jesus. So this morning, we are going to be celebrating God. I want you to dance like everything depends on it. Some people will wait to December 31st before they start dancing. No, dance like you are even in 2019. Dance as if everything is okay. Dance as if there is no pain. Dance as if the, 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 the bill is not there. Some, sometimes you need to ignore the situation. That's what the Bible said Abraham did. The way Abraham got to his expected end was that he damned the situation. He ignored the situation. The Bible said was giving glory to God. How do you imagine a 90-something-year-old man dancing that he has a baby that he does not have? Is that not level of insanity? Remember that God had told him, go and change your name to the one who has many children. And people are laughing at him. They're like, look at this guy. Yeah, now we, we know that he didn't have children. Now insanity has joined the problem. <laughs> Before it was children he didn't have. Now he doesn't even have his mind again. So this guy is a complete mad guy. Why are you dancing on Sunday morning? Did you not see what happened at home? Did you not look at the bill? That ticket that they sent to you? Did you not look at the, uh, the calendar? Do you not know what is happening? Do you not know this is December? Have you looked at the calendar? Today is December what? Is it third? Second. It's December second. There are fewer days in this year than the, 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 the days we have spent. So you are, what, what was there to rejoice about? But God said, come on, if you rejoice as if you have received it, you will eventually receive it. So that's my challenge to you, that God wants you to get to an expected end and you can increase your pace. You can increase your acceleration by praise. Well, let's change the gear this morning. Let's change the gear of 2018. Let's change the equation of this year. Let's get into a gear that, look, this is gear force now. Gear, we are moving higher to the next level. Dance like everything depends on it. Sweat. Dance like there's nobody near you. So because some people will be dancing as if no God and them, they are the same mate. Leave them alone. You do your own. When I come to church, it's me and God. Even I don't look at my family member, I just look at God. That's why sometimes when I go to some programs, they will say, come and sit in front. I say, no. Some of those guys that sit in front, they feel too cool for God. Me, I want to sit in the back or in the middle. Where nobody knows me, where I can dance and they won't even be putting me on camera because you know when they put some people on camera, they will dance that doing like this. Be cool. No, I don't want to be cool because I, I want the problem to leave me this way. I want to leave the problem here and go home free. This morning, somebody will go home free. In the name of Jesus. 
So in the next few minutes, we are going to be dancing. We are going to be celebrating God. We are also going to be giving our offerings. We are not going to be doing that. But the greatest thing is our attitude. Have an attitude of gratitude. There are things to be grateful for. There are things to celebrate God for. Mention them while you are dancing. Mention them while you are singing. You know, whether the song makes, the melody is good or it's not good, you make it a good melody. We are going to come forward. We are going to bring the offering forward. But before we do that, I want you to bow down your heads and speak to God. I want you to tell God that I know you have an expected end for me. I know you have an expected end for me. This morning as I dance, this morning as I celebrate, increase my speed toward that end. Increase my speed toward that expected end in the name of Jesus. This morning as I dance, this morning as I rejoice, increase my speed toward the expected end in the name of Jesus. There may be some people that need to come back home this morning. Some people like the prodigal son that need to say, God, I want to come back home. I'm coming to myself that 2018, I have just lived anyhow. I've lived like the devil himself. Uh, so I, I want to come back home. I want you to receive me. If you are like that, I want you to put your hand on your chest and speak to God. And say, Lord, I'm coming back home. I'm turning a new leaf this morning. I'm turning a new leaf this morning. I'm receiving Jesus afresh. I'm receiving Jesus for the first time. I I am turning a new leaf. 